So here we have um, a very recent kernel on the Android device. Hi. Hey, so, what yeah, are you, uh -huh. so what are you doing around here? So this demo is about updating kernels on production devices. Probably if you have an Android phone, you've seen that the kernel is at least two or three years old. And for some reason, the vendors just don't update their kernel. They stay on 4.4.13 or whatever forever uh, after making the initial cut. And, yes. We're trying to fi uh, fix that situation by showing it can be done. And uh, this is a phone that is off the shelf and uh, usually comes with 4423 or so. We updated it to 112 and it only took a day and a night. And uh, mm. so this is what you talk about here. If you're yeah. using an Android phone, you're probably using an old kernel. Right. It doesn't have to be that way. So how is it going to be better to have a new kernel? There's many reasons why the uh, kernels are updated. I mean, we don't release kernels for nothing. They have bug fixes, sometimes they have security fixes. New features? New features, uh, not within the LTS line. Uh, in this demo, we've only stayed within the LTS line, so uh, going from 4.4.23 to 4.4.112 or so. So that wouldn't give you any new features, but it would give you a lot of bug fixes, including a couple of security fixes. And of course, it would be interesting to go all the way to 4.16. That's the newest, right? Yes. So uh, what would you need to do to get to 4.16? Essentially just uh, port all the patches for the device to, uh, to the newer kernel versions. Tools like git merge and git rebase uh, make it quite easy, but the problem with some phones uh, is that they have millions of patches needed to, uh, just to make them work and uh, that stuff adds up and uh, when you haven't been updating your kernel for four years and then all of a sudden you need to uh, merge four years of external work into the, uh, the, your set of millions of patches. That's obviously going to take a lot of time. That's a Pixel yeah. right here, right? That's a Pixel 2XL. The, oh, one the of the few one. phones that actually have done the right thing. And, uh, it was originally released with an early 4.4, and now with the P preview the, uh, that's running on it, it has already been updated to 4.4.78 uh, uh, or something. But definitely something newer, not quite the latest, but... Yeah, 4.4.88 which isn't all that bad. So this is an example of a phone that's trying to do the right thing. So that I did it without your help? That was already shipped like this? Yes. But uh, uh, this is 4.4 and the latest is 4.16. What's right. the main difference between 4.4 and 4.16? There's a lot of differences there. Uh, new features and uh, performance improvements, of course also some bug fixes, but a lot of bug fixes are also made it into the later for four kernels. Is it possible that there's lots of new ARM optimizations? There's definitely some. In the and newer kernels? Yes. So it would be great if every new phone had the newest kernel. How, how, when is that going to happen? It's probably still going to take a while before the vendors wake up to this situation. But it's actually starting to get better. Uh, some the chipset makers are starting to uh, put their patches to, to make a specific device work into the upstream kernel. And then they get all the upgrades for free because the community uh, does the rebases for them. And once the device is supported in an upstream kernel, it will be supported for years. And uh, then, obviously, you can just pick an upstream kernel and maybe apply a small set of patches that you still need. And that's much less work than rebasing like millions of patches for this phone. I was just doing a video with Amit. He's, um, he's uh, uh, what's, he, what's he doing with the newest kernels on the Android? Yeah, he's doing a lot of kernel uh, updating and kernel testing and uh, essentially making sure those newer kernels work on uh, the PSPs we care about. and. Uh, making sure that the kernels actually work and don't bring about any regressions. And does it have, does this have anything to do with the treble? Um, not directly, but uh, in some ways uh, it's all connected because uh, treble is 
partially about uh, unifying devices on a newer kernel version. It's mostly about uh, keeping the drivers separate and so everything can use common user space. But uh, maybe at some point uh, we'll get to a point where devices can even share kernel modules. All right. Um, the, the work that you're doing is being noticed by the industry? Are they going to be like, OK, let's ship new kernels? I hope so. So far, a couple of vendors have shown some interest. Uh, we haven't gotten any new members from it so far, and we haven't received any, oh, great, we must do this immediately. But I think they're starting to look into it. So for example, when you updated that one, the XZ1, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you did this update, you say it took how long? About a day and a night. So what, what does that work consist of? Essentially checking out the kernel source they have released that works with the phone and adding the regular the kernel repository as a git remote and then using git merge and git rebase to, uh, to make sure that uh, the changes made in the upstream kernel and the changes made for, uh, for the spe uh, phone specifically get merged into one tree. So they get, and you test everything, check what's buggy or what works and fix it? You have to do that? Yeah, of that course. Day and a half? In the, with that day and a half, the, we had a kernel that boots and uh, seems to work, but obviously that didn't have any additional testing beyond, uh, okay, I can still make a phone call, I can still play a video. And then uh, you can run test suites like CTS and VTS or LKFT uh, to make sure you don't bring about any regressions. So is that, uh, is that the Qualcomm and MediaTek's job to look into this? Or is it the device makers at the end? All of them. Essentially, the, the way things are done most of the time is Linus makes a release, and then the chipset maker uh, takes one release, for, uh, forks it off as support for, uh, for their particular chipset, and then the device maker takes uh, what the chipset maker has, uh, has been building and possibly adds a couple of patches on top of that. So, in the end, uh, probably the chipset maker should uh, pull those patches, and then the device maker still needs to pull them from the chipset maker. But obviously a device maker could also bypass the ch chipset maker and just do it by themselves. Do you have a solution for all this? One solution would be to not start for forking old kernel versions in the first place and just work on top of mainline kernels, upstream patches to make a device work immediately and then pretty much the entire middlemen are eliminated and you can just uh, go for 4.17 or so as soon as it appears. Obviously, you want to do some verification, but... but how, how, how can you make a device that doesn't need a fork? Look at your computer. Uh, you can update a new, to a new kernel without uh, having to have any patches specifically for that computer. Mm. Essentially, on some of the boards that we are supporting, it's already the same situation. Uh, Heike uh, can boot a mainline kernel. The Macchiato bin can boot a mainline kernel. Probably some of the other boards that are about to come out can boot a mainline kernel. And they can because they upstream their stuff. Yes. That's very important. Otherwise, you can't boot a mainline. So just right. upstream. Uh, Right, either upstream or make sure someone else upstreams it for you, which is what some of those guys are also doing. So they, they get some uh, outsourcing companies, or what's it called, to... to yes. Like some, some guys like Free Electrons or some, something like that? Yes, for example, or they, uh, they the use their Linaro membership, or they, uh, they just put out some interesting stuff that is uh, not totally obfuscated and find someone in the community to volunteer to take it and put it to your kernels. That stuff is essentially happening as soon as you have an interesting device. People will care about it and want to see it supported. So I'd be very surprised if you put a reasonably interesting device out there and couldn't find anyone willing to help out for free. And then there's somebody at Linaro, I heard, that's working hard on backporting all the security stuff to old kernels. Yes. There's a team to do that? or Yes. At the moment that is needed because... Uh, like I said, there's millions of patches just needed to make this phone work and uh, updating that from 4.4 anything to 4.16 or so would just take a lot of work and uh, 
that's why it makes sense to, for now, keep maintaining the like uh, old dot releases like as well. Spectre and you backport it to all the old kernel LTS. All the old LTS get the backports? For important stuff like that, yes. Few important stuff, things only, okay. Mm, yes. All right, but much easier to just get new kernel. I mean, it would be better. Right. And ideally, every phone should come out with the current kernel and uh, keep updated. And there's probably some certification issues, but uh, those can be resolved. Shouldn't Google just say, okay, from now on, we want everybody to please uh, consider getting newest kernel? That would be really nice, and I think they're starting to do that. But it's going to take a while. <laughs>